And we're back, with some more oxygen not included. And we have returned to this planet with its uh, painful memories, though this time we have made sure there's an escape rocket. Just in case anything untoward should happen, there is a medical cot available, just in case, so that someone can be quickly evacuated from the planet if anyone gets a thermal dose of radiation poisoning. Right now, though, we want to put together a little bit of a fish expansion build so that we can start feeding the tree and harvesting that delicious resin. Now, let's just skip forward a bit while we fill this whole section up. Well, this, this monstrosity is kind of close to finished. We've, we've even got it set up a bit. We were only supposed to have one uh, multiplication pool, but I decided to stick in a second one because, you know, why not? Anyway, uh, I want to pressurize this whole area in gas, namely because I really don't want to run cooling loops to all of these auto sweepers and conveyor loaders and all that stuff. Put some gas in here. It'll transfer heat between the liquids, the solids, everything. We'll run a cooling loop through here to make sure everything stays nice and cool. And yeah, yep, they just keep finding ways to take naps all the damn time. Oh, and we scooped all the water out of here and put it in here. I just, I was not dealing with this stuff off-gassing and randomly breaking gas seals everywhere. So you know what? It can just stay in here with the rest of the gunk. Now, where were we? How does this stupidity work? Well, pretty simply, really. We've got an egg down here. This is actually a wild one, which we took off this Paku. But we're going to show how the whole system comes together. We basically get all the critter eggs and we chuck them in here. Now, critter egg will get picked up if any of these fish, which are the tamed ones and being fed by these fish feeders, drop any eggs, those eggs go up here, and they get sent around this system. Uh, this thing here is just to break up the eggs a little bit so they don't all come in in a big stream. And what's going to happen here is this egg is going to come across here, and then it's going to pass by this conveyor chute. If there are no eggs in here, this conveyor chute will be open, and the egg will immediately get dropped off. And when it does, this thing detects, hey, there's, uh, there's an egg in here, so it shuts off the conveyor chute. If another egg tries to come through here, it cannot get dropped off at this chute. Instead, it gets shunted to the next chute. And if that chute is also blocked off because there's an egg in there, it gets sent along here and up to our array of uh, fish holding tanks. Now, each one of these is set to hold 100 eggs. Once 100 eggs have been dropped in here, we don't have to worry about it anymore. It'll move on to the next and the next and the next until all six of these have 100 eggs apiece, meaning there is 600 Paku going. Then all the excess eggs will get dropped off over here and yeah, we'll let that go up to... Well, until the food here runs out. These things are full of thimble reed seeds. Two, four, six, eight. I think we had about 900 seeds we brought with us. So we'll just see how many this, how many fish this many seeds will generate for us. And then uh, if we need more, we can always come back. I decided to put in two tanks just so we could double up on the speed of production. This should allow us to turn out the fish an awful lot faster. And the way it self-regulates is, well, it takes five cycles for one of these eggs to hatch. The hatches, the eggs coming out of here will always be new. Actually, let's move you over to this one to maybe keep the tanks a bit even. So the fish coming out, of, the eggs coming out of here will always be new. They'll always be tame. So what happens is the moment an egg comes out of here, it'll flop down here, go into this section. And then five cycles later, at the very earliest, another egg will hatch and pop down here. And that's assuming an egg gets dropped instantly. So every five cycles, an egg flops in here. After 25 cycles, there'll be five fish, and then one will die, and then another one will come in. So it's just a constant cycle of between four to five fish in here most of the time, and always an egg waiting to pop in. That's it. That's all that goes on. Forever, and ever, and ever. All right, uh, you. Yep, all the eggs get fl uh, flicked in there, then they'll go into this section, and over here, I think we'll lock this off. We don't want any of them coming in anymore. We set this to all critter eggs as well. Uh, critter egg drop-offs. Done. So all the critter eggs get dropped off in here, as in, if any of the fish that end up in here lay an egg, they get dumped off into this and dropped out into this section. Since it's inside a door, it doesn't count as being in the same room, so these fish don't notice they're there and these fish keep reproducing. This auto super here dumps any fish meat that drops, it also takes all the eggshells that drop, uh, dumps them into this conveyor loader, that's going to go up here. We're going to filter off the meat to feed to the polluted oxygen tree, or the, sorry, the, the experimental tree, and all of the eggshells will probably dump somewhere else. Also discovered that when it comes to mini pods, you can't build more than one, but you can queue up multiple ones. So you could cover your entire planet in these if you want. But so long as you haven't actually built, finished building one, they allow you to build as many as you like. I had no idea. 
Yeah, all right. Uh, next up, though, we need power. You see, this whole thing needs power to run, and currently it's running off of our rocket power. Uh, well, and the only thing that's keeping this large transformer cool is that there's a little blob of napta touching it, which is also touching the igneous tiles, so as the igneous tiles get... Well, the heat from the large transformer is transferred to the igneous tiles. That's not long-term sustainable. Also, it's, it's blocking that rocket or getting in the way of that rocket launch. So we need to put ourselves in a power system. I'd also like to put in a flash cooling system to make sure that if the fish levels go too high and the tree can't eat them all quick enough, that the fish won't ever go off. Uh, it was pointed out that the tree can potentially get frozen due to eating frozen food. Turns out it wasn't that. It's uh, If you put it on top of a non-mesh tile in a vacuum, it could potentially happen, but we're going to keep this whole area in a vacuum and hopefully prevent any nastiness from freezing the tree. If that tree gets too cold, it has to be between, I think it's 100 to minus 100 to plus 100 degrees. So minus 100? Yeah, minus 100 to plus 100 degrees it works, but the resin can come out as solid if it goes below 26 C. It's 25, 26 C, something like that. The resin freezes at a very low, t or at a temperature you wouldn't expect. Okay, where are we going to put that power? Ooh, and we're going to need solar as well. I think solar will, I was going to go with geothermal, but I think solar would be more sustainable long term. And we're going to need a cooling solution, and we're going to need a cooling solution to ch chill this down to about, I want 17 and a half degrees. 17 and a half degrees mean any tropical pacu that spawn and any uh, gulp fish, as in the freezing fish and the tropical fish, both of them can survive at 17 and a half degrees, give or take about oh, seven and a half degrees. So that gives them the widest variance to make sure that none of them end up dying. And that would require a cooling loop to go through here and through here. I think we can arrange that. Oh, and the power. I will admit this is not my cleanest looking work, but it should technically work. Uh, let's cut off the water for now. We'll probably add in some more later, but for the time being, we just want to get in enough water to give us a little bit of a, a layer of steam. Ah, good job, Andy. Good job. Now get out of there. <laughs> We're trying to get in a vacuum joint plate for this power conductor before we accidentally release more gas in here. We've managed to turn this place into a vacuum. It was mildly annoying, but get out of there. Quick, it, it, now, okay, now build that in, but don't stand inside there when you're building it, if you wouldn't mind. All right, uh, where are we looking at? Oh, yes, we have a two cooling loops going on. We have one cooling loop here. This cooling loop's purpose is going to be to reduce this down to about minus 50 or so. And that's because we've got a transport or conveyor rail going through it, and we want to reduce the temperature of the food going through here to about minus 30 or minus 50, somewhere around there. And then that food can be dumped at the base of the tree. The tree will eat it. And even if it doesn't eat it immediately, the food should be unable to go off because it'll be deep frozen and in a vacuum. Now, though, some more stuff we'll have to do to make sure that the tree doesn't cause us any problems, but we can work on that later. Let's hope we never have to launch that rocket or it's going to cook that tree. Uh, but uh, down here, how are we looking? Ah, the fish have actually dropped their first eggs. We've got one egg here, a second egg there, and a third egg over there. Um, We'll probably have to wait a little longer before things really kick off, but it's... Ooh, there goes one. We've got an egg. Uh, as you can see, egg goes along here. Can't go in here. Namely, this critter center is sensing, hey, there's already an egg in here. Don't bother dropping one off. Uh, same with the second one. So it basically just zips by both of them. Uh, then it goes all the way around and it goes up to the first thing over here. This says, hey, have 100 eggs dropped in here yet? No, nope, we're at 99. And now we're down to 98. The reason we've got it set it to 100 is I found that... Last time I did something like this, uh, and it turns out the last time I did something like this was the same tree again about two years ago, a little bit over two years ago. Someone pointed that out in the comments. I'd already gone through all this design phase. Uh, but once you got too many fish in here, it started to cause huge problems. So I've limited them to 100 per room, and that should hopefully keep a nice stable population that won't die. As well as that, we'll have to do some temperature control. Otherwise, the uh, the occasional tropical pacu that spawns or gulp fry might die because of the temperature ranges they can survive in. Regular Paku, minus 20 to 80 C. Plenty of livable range to work with. Tropical Paku, 10 to 100 C, which means you've got to keep the temperature above 10, but below 25. So somewhere between 10 and 25, 17 and a half degrees is what we're going to try and target for. If we go outside of those ranges, those gulp fish or those tropical fish will end up dying, which would end up decreasing the numbers, which would end up causing us problems long term. Which is why we have this monstrosity of a cooling loop going around. That's going to be interesting, but... We'll worry about that later. For now, what we want to do is hook this thing up to the power grid. We want to start this up 
already we've got super coolant in here. We're going to fill this with polluted water in a minute. But uh, we need to plug this into the main power grid, as in our main power spine here, so that we can give it the necessary oomph to get started. There's 1200 watts draw on each one of those, so our current conductive wire is not going to meet needs. Give me a minute while we uh, do a little bit of power management. Ah, oh, damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. How did I miss this? Um... Good job, Uzo. Good job. Uh, first things first. We need you to go somewhere where this is not going to be a problem when you get out of your suit. Actually, you know what? Maybe going into the rocket capsule is the best idea. Uh, there's plenty of radiation there. It'll kill all the germs. And then we can mop it up and dump it into the tank. So you know what? Yeah, go for it. We also have a bunch of oxygen in here. I really gotta remember that we've got 500 kilos of oxygen just lying there that we can use at a later date. You know, we'll worry about that later. Uh, where is the... Come on. There we are. Perfect. Uh, yep, we'll just get rid of all of that. How's the germs looking on that? That's what I'm sort of interested in. Huh. How is there no... Did the radiation kill it already? Huh. Well, that means we can just dump it in with the other polluted water we've got on this planet. No harm, no foul. We'll just chuck it down here. Actually, no. How? How do you do... Mm -hmm. Just... Just... Just get it. <sighs> You're about to jump back there, aren't you? You're immediately about to jump back there. I know you are. Damn morons. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll just let uh, let them all finish all the construction projects they're doing. Then, they, then we'll put a layer under this. For now, we're just going to have to assume that duplicates are going to do dumb stuff. Uh, we've already got a medical cot in here. Uh, Grumpy Bear, go, go get yourself some medical attention, you fucking muffus. <laughs> we will uh, finish this off. We'll be ready to go and hopefully fire this thing up fully in a minute. Right, time to hook up the power, and if we do this right, nothing should break. We haven't hooked up the batteries in here. Those batteries, if we hooked them up, we would have, well, minor problems. The reason being they're not in an atmosphere, they'd start to overheat and break pretty quickly. So we need to get this water turned into steam. However, well, that means we need to get one of these aqua tuners running to generate the heat, and we need enough heat to make sure that it turns into steam. So we've got two choices on that. This one here is the first one we're going to hook up, that thermal aqua tuner, but that will require us to do this. Uh, however, that will hooks that into the main grid, so we don't want that. Uh, so now, one second, not that, you, boom. So now the main watt what wire is coming down here and plugging into this grid. And that's also plugging into this large power transformer, which is plugging into this power wire. This power wire we just severed from here, so that should be a seamless, semi-seamless transition. There's only a minor blip. This here is set to, if the temperature of the supercoolant inside that pipe is above minus 50, we would like you to activate. And that should quickly drag the temperature in there down to something... Ooh. I maybe should have insulated these tiles a little bit better. That'll probably be fine. We can worry about that stuff later. And this is going to be our flash freezer. This, this should cause any fillets that come out of here to get immediately frozen down to below into deep freeze temperatures. And now that you're done, let's put some actual tiles under you. Oh, wait, 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 wait. There's one thing I want to do. I want to get rid of that tile there. Hmm. Second. There we go. Perfect. I just want to deconstruct that now, just in case it tries to land down here again. I want to make sure this area is nice and clean, and then we're going to make sure to seal this place off so that there's no more problems in here. Right. Much better. So, let's give this thing a little bit of a start. Um, oh, for a second there, I thought they were asleep. I think we've got some foods on board. Yeah, we've got some cooked seafood. Cooked seafood will do as a substitute for now. Uh, for you, uh, no, get rid of the frost burgers. Uh, crank that up to 100%. Give us some cooked seafood, if you wouldn't mind. All right, that means we'll take the cooked seafood out of storage. Uh, cooked seafood is in there. Perfect. That's seven. Okay, enough. Then, cooked seafood is ready to go. Give me the cooked seafood. It is already... Oh, actually, it's already deep frozen. Never mind. We'll put it back in here and make sure that its temperature goes up. That's the weird thing. You put this thing in the freezer and it rapidly... Or you put it in the fridge and the temperature rapidly goes up. Yep. Yep. All right, we'll wait until this hits about 5C. Oh, Uzo, I should probably put you in... Yeah, you can pop over here for a bit and get yourself healed up. 
Nice and quick. Okay, cook seafood, I think you're good enough for now. We'll put this back to wherever it was. One kg of frost burgers is enough. For the cook seafood, we are going to move both of these manually uh, down to this location. That way this uh, auto sweeper should be able to grab both of them. Right, cook seafood dropped off. Auto sweeper set to pick up the cook seafood. Uh, try to imagine this is a paku fillet. The fact that it's cooked shouldn't matter. Uh, dumps it in there, and that goes across the line. So anywhere a paku dies, it'll leave behind a paku fillet. This paku fillet will come up here. Now I've changed this. This should have been set to paku fillets, but we've set it to cook seafood just for demonstration purposes. And uh, that's going to go up here. The seafood is at 17 degrees and 26 degrees respectively, and it's about to enter the flash, flash freezer. Uh, you, how you doing? You're 17, 26, 14, what are you coming out at? Ooh, minus four, not enough. And you're coming out at... Oof, minus five, min uh, minus 1.5, minus 7.4. Might be because there's so much on the line, I don't like that. But they should all be coming out in one kilo blob, so it should be a lot easier. Uh, and there. Drops down, this one is refrigerated. Both of them are refrigerated, which is okay, but I'd prefer if they were deep frozen. So you know what? Let's crank that down a little bit more. We can go colder. Yeah, that should be a little bit better. Done. And then this thing is going to start leaking resin. That resin is going to block that hole. Perfect. That means since that resin can't escape out there, no gases can get in. This should keep the tree in a vacuum, which means it can't exchange temperature with anything, including that cooked seafood. So you'll notice here its temperature is 26 degrees. No gases can get in, so its temperature should never change. And we can just dumping in seafood, and as long as the seafood is frozen below minus, whatever, 20 degrees or something, it'll be deep frozen, and it will never, ever go off. Meaning no matter how much we dump in here, it should just leave massive stockpiles. Uh, how are we looking? Oh, and any time that resin goes over the edge, it'll pour down here, and this liquid pump can dump it into this liquid reservoir. At least until we've got five tons of the stuff. Nice. We've already got 9.9 .9 kilos of resin, and soon we'll have even more. Okay, then. And then uh, once that's full, it'll start flowing over the edge, and it can, like, flood the planet, I suppose. We're not really that concerned. We've we've left this uh, access in here for now. At some point we'll be closing this off though. Uh, and we'll be closing this off too. We just left this access in here so we could do some maintenance and make sure the whole thing's working, which so far it is. Ooh, we're up to three fish in here and there's already a replacement egg waiting. That is perfect. Ah. All right, now we just gotta do the second cooling loop. That might be a little bit trickier. All right, second cooling loop is going to be this liquid pump down here. Mm. Right, what we do is we feed this onto this section, and that's going to put the water around this loop, though I've made this one a little bit different to the ones we normally run. Uh, and also, it's going to run on polluted water, which is not the most efficient, but it is what we're doing. And you were set to minus 17.5 degrees. Perfect. Uh, give us a minute to spin up, and we'll show you what we're trying to achieve. This cooling loop, we're trying something a little different. We're putting the liquid reservoir, not before the aqua tuner, but after. Uh, the reason we do this is it kind of, well, I should probably flip the tank a little bit more, but we're not going to do that for now. What this means is, this is going to cool down a bunch of water really cold, dump it in here, and then that temperature is going to get smushed out depending on how much liquid is in here and what temperature it's at. In theory, this should give us a nice fine level of control. However, in practice, uh, we'll see. I just want to do it as an experiment. Uh, an alternative version would be, say, this one back here. Where is it? Ah, yes. And this one... The actual liquid tank is before the aqua tuner. So that means as the water return or the liquid returns back, its temperature is even at to 22.3. However, then it passes through the aqua tuner, and the aqua tuner is like, no, 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 you're supposed to be 20 C, so it reduces its temperature massively by a 14 degrees, meaning the stuff coming out the other side is 8. So our target temperature is 20 degrees, but it's coming out at 8 because of just the way these things are set up. Now we don't really care here, but it does mean that this place over here is incredibly chilly. Sort of a, an unintended side effect, and it's namely because of all these steam turbines over here. However, if we smooth the temperature out before it, on the opposite side, it should change things around slightly, and I would like to see exactly how that works. I've never done this, but in theory, it should allow us a very fine level of control, but only realistically on the last leg of the journey. For example, this stuff over here is uh, turning over, and that's adding heat into the water at the very end, so I'm pretty sure what'll happen is this stuff will end up around minus 10 or at 10 degrees and the stuff up here will end up at around the 17.5 we aim for because remember it's got to cool like a lot of water there is yeah there's an awful lot of water around here we're going to have to cool but eh, we give it some time and see and why are people starving how did this break i set you to one kilo and it's oh i set you to frost buns 
Frost burgers, please. Okay, that would have been embarrassing if we had lost a duplicate that way. Minor change to the cooling loop. Well, actually, pretty major change to this cooling loop. I figured out what I was doing wrong. This has been a suggestion in the comments a few times that I've seen, and I was... Mm. See this uh, temperature sensor here? This temperature sensor is checking the water going into the aqua tuner, and that's what we're basing our decisions on. That's not what we should be doing. What we should be doing is basing our readings on the water coming out of the liquid tank after the temperature has been smushed. So what we've done here is we can't really put it right there, so uh, we've had to move on a bit, but just to imagine that this uh, temperature sensor is right outside the tank. It's going to check if the water coming out of here is, is minus, uh, well, 17.5 C. If it is, great. If it's not, it's going to tell this to start dumping more cold water in there. And because there's so much water in here, it doesn't matter if it decreases a blot of 10 kilos of water by 14 degrees, there's so much water in here to smush out the temperature that it won't drive it down massively, and we should always be able to flow control it perfectly to 17.5 degrees coming out of here forever and ever, and eventually it'll just drag everything down to about that temperature. We might want to go down as far as 16 or something like that, but for now, let's just hook that up. Uh, to get a little bit creative with these ones. You know what? Um, yeah, we can just hook those together, and thankfully for the pliers tool, they call it a disconnect tool, but you know what? It's the pliers tool. It's always the pliers tool. Done. That should mean we should be able to keep the temperature in there very, very stable. And you are now doing nothing. You're... you're Existence is meaningless. Sorry about that. Perfect. Now, you might be worried, but what happens if we decrease the temperature of the water and they're so low it actually starts freezing the water in pipes? Can't happen. The water's starting. Like, this is the temperature where the water is measured. So if the water was low enough that it could freeze in the pipes in there, it'd need to be, well, oh, minus 14. Uh, it'd need to be below zero degrees anyway. So the water coming back can never be below that, unless we mess up somewhere. I mean... It could happen, but in theory, it should be perfectly stable though, and should work out just fine. And we'll find out as it goes around. While this spins up, we might as well take the time to do something a little fun, and that is destroy all of this magma. Now, there was a wonderful suggestion to use nuclear waste to rapidly drain the heat out of all of this, so I say we give that a go. We're going to core this area out, pour some nuclear waste on top, that'll turn into nuclear fallout, which has far less thermal capacity or heat in it. And we're going to cool that back down until it turns back into liquid. It drops down, goes up, up, down, up, down, up, down, down. And see how well that works. We either make a huge mess or we cool down all the magma. Either or, it should be fun. Oh, and I'm killing all the squeaky puffs. If we leave any of them behind, they'll die, leave meat, and that meat will then rot and turn, give off polluted oxygen. I'd rather keep this place nice and clean. Ooh. And what have we got coming out of our gates? We have nothing worthwhile. We will take it. And we'll scoop it up and put it away for later. Anyway, down here, where were we? Oh, God. Damn it. He was... Ah. Right. Um, well, you need ladder segments. Uh, you need to take that out immediately. We need to change your schedule so that you don't try anything stupid like trying to fall asleep while we're down here. Um, that would be a bad idea. Ah. Uh, uh, you need to put together an obsidian ladder. Uh, you, a couple of people, like duplicates can help you out. They can put obsidian there. Uh, one ladder segment there, and then another ladder segment there, and you should be out of there. Assuming, assuming you don't do anything in additionally stupid. Come on, grab it, grab it, grab it, grab it, grab it. Go, go, go. Yes, I know it's hot. Well, you shouldn't have fallen in here. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, next one, next one. Go for it. Why are you? Just stop thinking. Start doing. Okay. Now, we're going to get you to move up to here. Okay, and then we're going to get you to move up to here. Oh. You absolute muppet. Right. Well. Well, I'll put you into... You can go, go... Yep, you're already on the way. That is good. That is that is the first smart thing you've done. Well, not the first smart thing you've done today, but it's one of the smartest things you've done today. Oh, all right. Well, let's just start digging out here. And please, for the love of God, don't stand on the tile when you're digging it out. That seems like it just basics 101 and not being a stupid duplicate. Okay, there you go. There you go. Oh, right. Now let's cap this thing off nicely. What we're trying to do here is, we're going to dump nuclear waste in here. Nuclear waste is going to heat up, turn into fallout, rise up here, get cooled by this, and then dropped right back down again. 
Uh, we have to put in one turbine to actually put in a cooling solution for the steam turbines, otherwise the steam turbines will overheat. So this one's kind of sealed off. And what we're going to try and do is use a little bit of this as cooling power to help maybe, maybe help out a little bit over here. If this all messes up, we don't care. We can always do other methods of getting rid of the magma. There's lots of other cooling solutions. But this was one of the suggestions from the comments, and we are playing pretty casual. So let's just see what nuclear waste can do for us when it comes to magma disposal. And uh, hopefully no one does anything too stupid while we're winning. I think I, we've sealed them off from the bottom of the map, so we should be fairly safe. Well, we're just about prepped. May have stuck in a little bit too much water, but I'm fine with that for now. Cooling loop is in place, so these steam turbines should not overheat. We're going to have to dump in some nuclear waste in here, which means we're going to have to start pulling it out of a rocket. Uh, how's our rocket looking? Uh, everyone seems fairly happy. Yep, someone's getting in a nap, while another person is yodeling nearby. That yodeling must really be just therapeutic and help you s uh, Anyway, we're gonna have nuclear waste pop up here. That is fine. You can be above. And nuclear waste should have started pumping. Excellent. On the outside. That nuclear waste is going to come down here. No, we can snip that. Don't want you going anywhere. Oh, can snip that. Don't want it going in there. We want that waste coming in here. Now, there is a small possibility that this could all go horrifically wrong. And by that I mean this could melt the walls. Uh, if it melts the walls, that would be a problem. They are made of igneous rock, but they're insulated tiles made of igneous rock, so they're probably fine. All right, nuclear waste should come down here, and once we get our first blob... Actually, let's go grab our first blob. Liquid pipe, properties, nuclear waste. Seriously? Let me look at the nuclear waste. Nope, won't let me. Never mind, it'll be out here in a moment, and then it should immediately flash to nuclear fallout. I really should have checked the temperatures on this before I kick this off, but hey, it is what it is. There we go. Nuclear waste. Uh, properties. It will vaporize at 526.9 degrees. However, it's got a specific heat capacity of 7.44. That means it takes, it's second only to supercoolant in terms of the amount of heat it can hold. Uh, how are you looking? Wow. Right, you are just taking you a while to go up in temperature, all right. Still have not hit the point we're looking for. That's okay. That's okay. Oh, man. This is... Hey, there we go. Nuclear fallout. Now, nuclear fallout only has a specific heat capacity of 0 0.265. That's minuscule. Absolutely minuscule. It's not even... It's not really that much. In fact, let's just go back inside the rocket for now and turn this off. Eh, turn you to below. That turns off the pump. Grand. Actually, how much nuclear waste have we got in there? So, 65 tons there, 24 tons there, 59 ton. We got, we got a lot. We got plenty for any of our future needs. However, down here. So basically, this nuclear waste is soaks up loads of heat. And, oh, we accidentally made an igneous rock tile. Come on, there is 57 kilos of stuff there. How is that even possible? Anyway, this is now transferring its heat up to these temperature shift plates. One of them's made of diamond, one of them's made of steel, steel on either side. That's cooling down that water, but as it does, that nuclear fallout should condense. Should condense? Huh. Condensation point is 66.9. Right. Well, turns out I was not thinking about this the correct way then. That means we're going to need to make some changes here. I'm not even sure we can. What we need to do is actually cool this nuclear fallout down using super coolant. However, we need some way to seal this metal tiles off from it. So I'm thinking we break in here deconstruct those two tiles. That will give us a way in, and then we can seal this in across the top. That gives us some time to make some changes. Yeah, there we go. Thank... Ah, thank Randy for NAFTA. That NAFTA there is the only thing that... It just makes dealing with stuff like this and fixing your mess up so much handier. Kind of like this fly-by-the-seat-of-your-prance approach. I have made so many mistakes that normally it's just, you know, I would have had to play a lot more carefully. This casual approach just makes things... Uh, just nicer, more pleasant, uh, less stressful. Okay, you go across there, and that should seal us off from the source of heat for at least a wee bit. Hmm. Actually, I should maybe swap out those metal tiles down there. That might be an idea as well. We could squish this down a bit. What I want to do is find a way to cool down some metal tiles touching this temperature shift plate. Huh. Maybe. Give me a minute here. I think I know how to fix this. So, what we've done is we've stuck in an aqua tuner. We've put in some super coolant into said aqua tuner. Now that super coolant is rotating around and doing its thing of cooling itself down as cold as we possibly can. 
Uh, we've gotten away from this area over here because it turns out that was stupid. But what we can do is we can now... Uh, we have a couple of radiant pipes here. We've made them out of steel just to be safe. Uh, they're going to rotate around until this gets very cold indeed. And then we're going to try and flash freeze some nuclear fallout so it falls down, hits this, and then... The loss of... Uh, you know what? Let's just go for it and see if it works. Not my smartest plan. Yeah, we can come up with other ways of disposing this, but I do want to see if we can get this to work. In fact, I think we can break it, join these two places together. They don't need to be separate anymore. Uh, there we go. Okay, that's too fast. I'm pretty sure the super coolant is going to overheat, is it? That was perhaps a mistake. Uh, yeah, one second. I think we'll replace that for a normal tile instead of a metal tile. It definitely cools the fallout, just not as fast as we'd like. Hmm. New plans need to be made. I figure a quick reset on all of our mess-ups is probably a good choice. This way we get rid of all of this junk and we can start afresh as if none of this ever happened. For our second attempt, it's going to be very simple. Nuclear waste comes down here. We're going to put in a 10 kilo blob to start. Uh, that blob lands there. We set this if the temperature is, whoa, is below... Uh, Alright. Yeah, if the temperature is below, say, 500C. Engage the door. And then it sort of, like, goes up and down a bunch? Eh. It kind of works. Kind of, sort of. Uh, I think we're going to need to make that temperature a little bit higher. If it's above 500C? Let me play around with this some more. We might need a little bit more nuclear waste to make this work right. Well, it's an odd one. It works, but I'm not sure I like it. Uh, it's draining the heat out of here quite nicely. That's down to 1400. It's 1500 over here. And the premise is pretty simple. Uh, this nuclear fallout has just such low amount of specific heat capacity. It goes up to the top. It gets cooled down rapidly turns back into a liquid, like this nuclear waste has been dropped all the way to 159 degrees because we flash froze it. So all it cost us was the heat costs of reducing the heat of the nuclear fallout, then it turns into nuclear waste, which has a much higher specific heat capacity. Then you have to dump loads of heat into the nuclear waste, just absolutely gobsmacking amounts of it, which turns it back into a gas, which then immediately gets turned right back into a liquid and dropped back down. It's like sometimes it gets so chilled it turns into a solid. And then you see, same thing again. I had to uh, dig back in here and put in some temperature shift plates to speed things along. If you want, though, you can, like, we can deconstruct that to make it a little bit slower. Uh, oh yeah, we're doing some brute force cooling here and there, which is probably not great. Hmm. I'm gonna make a few modifications just to make sure it's perfect. While this abomination has been going on, uh, there's a couple of things we should probably cover. This has been very, very busy. We've actually got over 100 eggs in here has passed through. This one has got 15 new eggs. And we've got a good example of what exactly has been happening. For example, this fish is at one year of age, which means, well, that's one. Uh, this one's at six, which is five years older than that one, which is perfect if the eggs get in there. And then we got 11, which is five years older than that. And then we got 17, which is... Ooh, actually, that's six years older than that. And then 17 plus 5 should give us about 22, 23? Yeah, okay. Well, close enough. Uh, and that's five fish in there. And we've got an egg in here waiting to pop in that will drop in in five cycles. And then the eldest fish will die in three. So it's just about exactly where we want it. And it just keeps running that way. Well, until we run out of seeds, that is. And it should handily populate all of these. And how's the tree doing? How much resin have we got out of this? 72 kilos. Not a lot, but in all fairness, this one's the only one that's spun up and... Have you even been here 25 cycles? There's a lot of fish. Oh my god, there's so many fish. There's actually 100 fish. How many are in that room right now? We have 90 fish in that room and a whole bunch of eggs. Perfect. Right, down here, how has this been going on? Well, it works, but I don't like it. Uh, how do I explain this? Fine, the nuclear waste stays down here, it heats up rapidly, eventually hits the gasification point, and when it does that, it flies up to the top as gas. That gas, which is nuclear fallout, doesn't have very high thermal capacity, so you've basically destroyed a bunch of heat. And then this sort of instantly cools it down again, and now you've got a bunch of solid nuclear waste, which has gone back up in specific heat capacity. And it takes ages to heat it back up again. And look, 
yep, yep. And then some liquid comes down, some engagement, some heat draws. And you can see down here the temperature is actually falling. Personally? I mean, okay, this works. It is actually a pretty decent way to delete heat. I would prefer to strap like 20 steam turbines on top of here. Maybe just do a heat tunnel up here, maybe strap on like, ooh, could you fit them on? Actually, that would be a tight squeeze. But yeah, strap on 15, 20 steam turbines, run them at about 600 degrees, use some super coolant for it to cool down the steam turbines to stop them overheating. You could delete just gallons of heat. In fact, I think that's what I'm going to do next, right? Just instead of doing subtlety, we're just going to slam this with a giant sledgehammer of cooling. Maybe we should do that in the home planet. The home planet does have an enormous amount of magma, and the only thing we're really using it for, well, we've got this geothermal power we don't really care about anymore. In fact, we barely sipped on that one. And we do have this petroleum boiler. This one we need to keep operational, but I think we can just thermia aqua tuner, some super coolant. We can actually use that as a heat source instead, and that thing will run just fine. We don't even need the magma. Then we'd have to cool down all of that magma there. Ooh. Say rip out this half of the map and put in like 50, 60 steam turbines and then just cool the whole thing down. Maybe this half of the map. Actually, there's more space this side and more to deal with. We could strap on, say, about 50 steam turbines. Yeah, that'd be beautiful. Hmm. Actually, you know what? In that case, we'll let this thing do its whatever. It can stay here. We, we have... I, I'm not for or against it. Oh, actually, we might not be able to run it while we're gone. Wait, 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 wait. Paku fell it. Yep, Paku filled made it over and it's chilled to minus 60, which means it is sterile atmosphere and deep freeze, so it is completely fresh and does not go off. So, as long as all of them go through our deep freeze and end up over here below, uh, what's the deep freeze? Minus 18. This should never go off, meaning even if we end up with too much meat coming out of this, the tree won't care. It'll just accumulate there. Excellent. Oh, and what's the temperature like coming out of this section? Uh, 17.5. How the... How are you coming out of that temperature? It shouldn't be possible. Okay, polluted water is content 17.4. Okay, I think we need some more water in that system. In that case, one second. To help things stabilize, we dumped a whole bunch of extra polluted water into this tank. So now, uh, what we really should have is we should have this thermal aquatuna really close to this liquid reservoir. Instead, we've got quite a lot of pike segments between it and the entrance to the tank. We should really have that liquid tank over here, but that turns on, and when it does, it basically puts colder water into the liquid reservoir. The liquid reservoir starts dropping in temperature. This eventually detects that the temperature has dropped, and when it does, it turns off that. And of course, there's a bit of a lag because we have it too far away, but the temperature only drops a few degrees below, and this allows us to carefully meter the temperature out on the other end, which means we don't end up cooling anything too much. In fact, what's our temperatures looking like? 17.5, 7... Oh, wow, that is... Like, once we get beyond about this point, things get worse, but that is pretty damn stable. Huh. 17.8, over here it's 23. Well, there's not a fish in there. And then here we're at 21. This is all within range, though. That's what... Yeah, every single area here is now good for both types of fish. That... Well, that's sort of exactly what we wanted. Perfect. And it's even cooling down the steam turbines up top. Now, this over here has almost cooled down the magma to a solidification point. Eh, we'll give it a minute. Hey! We managed to cool down some magma. Alright, that's that's still way too slow. And the problem is we can't really leave here because that thing's eating an enormous amount of power. Uh, I suppose we could put down an awful lot more solar panels, but I just don't think there's enough power generation on this planet. How are we looking on the light front? No, no, we're, we're hitting every single one of those solar panels. Hmm. What do we do for power generation if we're going to keep this running? I mean, yeah, we could just make a geothermal plant to power it. But that would... Mm. Minor modification, problem solved. We just stick in a big metal spike, and that feeds heat in here. If the temperature goes below 180 degrees, we inject more heat. That keeps the steam turbines running, which generates the electricity necessary to run the aqua tuner. Of course... It's, it's the anticipations of what's going to go wrong that gets you. So, if we keep running this, eventually this is all going to start running out of heat, at which point we we'll, won't have enough power to actually run the aqua tuner. So, we set this little te temperature sensor here. If the temperature in here goes below 150 in the steam room, actually, let's make that 100 and... Yeah, 
let's make it 165, just to be on the safe side. It goes below 165, that means we're not getting enough temperature in anymore from the magma. That means we won't have enough temperature to run the aqua tuner, that means we'd start flatlining our little system over here. This system here needs to keep running. Which means, if this runs out of power, it'll turn off the aqua tuner so this thing stops drawing power, and then the solar can provide all the necessary power to keep this thing running. We've got five batteries, and this thing takes, it, it just sips power. All you're going to do is... Run the, uh, the auto sweepers every so often and the occasional automatic dispenser as eggs get moved about the place. But realistically, it shouldn't be too bad. Oh, uh, one thing about this system. All the eggshells and all of the meat from the actual breeding section, I never bothered setting up a filtration system for it. We could have just put in a second conveyor loader and had all of those fed up and dumped up onto the line up here. So say two extra conveyor loaders and have it, I know, run up here through the side and get fed into this system. I was not bothered. Just the eggshells and the meat from this are so minuscule in comparison to what the rest of this is going to generate it, it seemed like a waste of time. Yeah, you could, though, if you want. And flash freeze-wise, I think this whole system works quite nicely. It's not my... actually, it's not best design or worst design, but it works, and the temperature control amount of it I do quite like. This little uh, output system, it's very, very good about controlling it down to like a fraction of a degree like we have it pretty far away and we're still keeping within about half a degree at all times if we put that closer to the aqua tuner i'm pretty sure we could get that temperature control down to within a little point two of a degree no matter how bad it gets assuming you put enough liquid into it look at that point seventeen point one out of a target of 17.5 we only are off by like just a tiny tiny amount just beautiful absolutely beautiful and uh, uh, that i quite enjoyed Next up, at home, we've made a few minor changes. Actually, what have we got in the... Yeah, salt water, we'll take it. Uh, over here, we actually were running out of gas to run our gas ranges. Uh, we were unable to produce all the frost burgers we were able to make after we put in all of our wild water weed seeds, plus the sweet weed exuberant that we got in over here, plus uh, once we got the bleachstone hopper, I put through a few tons of bleachstone so that we could have run ourselves a whole bunch of water weed over here. Thing is, that was all we were really bottlenecked on. You check, we got lots of frost, we got 2 million calories of frost burgers and 6 million calories of barbecue. All we're missing is the lettuce and we can make ourselves a whole bunch more frost burgers, uh, which we need for our generational rocket. And so what we did was we plugged in these things. I haven't been bothering tapping into these, so there's thousands of kilos of natural gas that is plugged in here. And what we've done is we've hooked them onto our automation grid. This is our automation ribbon that runs our petroleum boiler from way back when. All it is, we tapped it into section three. And if section three sends down a green signal, which is plugged into this gas tank. So if this gas tank runs below 5%, turns on the gas pumps downstairs, and we get a whole bunch of natural gas coming in. What is going on? Where is that natural gas coming from? Oh, wait. I think this thing's come off cooldown, has it? Yep, it's come off cooldown. Never mind. That was on cooldown for a while, which is why we ran out of natural gas, which stifled food production. But we're all good again. So, next up, there's a few things we want to take care of while this goes on. We can fly away from this planet, and I was thinking there was two things. First, well, maybe one of the first things I'd like to take care of is this planet here. Samir, whatever. We need to fix this planet. Namely because I'm sick of the damage, overheating, and all of that stuff, and building broken. Those things need to be fixed. Uh, or removed, or something along those lines, because it's driving me mental. Uh, also, there's a lot of fish here. I think it's time for a fish exterminatus, namely just to free up a few frames. As well as that, the water's overflowing. We literally made the tank this big, and now it's overflown because we've been away that long. Also, there's a whole bunch of tropical paku that just landed there. The, uh, the gate, yeah, we let some fish hop out of there, and they landed down on that blob of, I think that's nuclear waste they're sitting on. Kind of impressive. Well, uh, I believe their luck has come to an end because we shall be arriving here next round to clean up this whole mess. So resin-wise, we still haven't quite come up to speed. Give it another 100 cycles and I'm pretty sure that thing will be churning out resin at a reasonable pace. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed and good luck!